Hey, welcome back to Game Development with Pygame. Today we're going to start making our first game. We've learned how to create sprites and move them around on the screen, and so we're ready to start uh, making a game out of that. And the first game we're going to make is called a shmup. And if you haven't heard the term before, shmup is an abbreviation for shoot 'em up. That's any kind of game where you run around or fly around and shoot at stuff that's coming at you. Uh, Space Invaders, Galaga, Asteroids, these are all examples of shmups you may have heard of. And so for this one, I thought that we would make a little spaceship that we're flying around and we're shooting at aliens or asteroids and um, eventually we can have all sorts of fun stuff like fancy explosions and power-ups and different kinds of lasers and um, fun sound and music. So let's get started. All right, let's get started on our shmup game. So I'm going to take my Pi game template, which we made in the previous lessons, and I'm going to save that as, and I'm going to call this shmup. Okay, so now we're we have a nice starting point for our project. And the first thing let's do is set up our screen settings. So we're going to make this a vertical game, so it's going to be taller than it is wide. So we're going to make the width 480 and the height about 600. That should fit on just about everybody's screen. And this is going to be an action game, so we want it to be really fast and smooth. We're going to set the FPS to 60. Uh, now that means that Things are going to need to happen really fast in our loop so that the game doesn't get slow, but we should be fine. We're not going to do anything too fancy in this first time around. Okay, and we'll set the title of the window also to shmup. Now we have a lot of things to consider before we're going to finish this game. We have to figure out the player and how it moves, we have to figure out shooting, we have to figure out enemies and how the enemies behave, we have to figure out the graphics and the sound, uh, music, uh, are there going to be power-ups, things like that. And that's a lot of things to do and we can't do them all at once. So we're going to do this step by step. And the very first step is we need to get a sprite onto the screen to be our player so that we can start talking about movement. So we're going to make a player sprite. And you could name this, you could name this ship if it's going to be a ship, but you might have enemy ships that might be a confusing name. Um, I'm going to stick with just calling it player. Uh, and this is going to be a Pi game sprite object. And if you forgot how the sprite stuff works, you can look back at the last uh, couple of lessons where we talked about working with sprites. And if you recall, every sprite has a couple of mandatory things, required things that you have to do uh, for the sprite to work. Um, and one of those is we need to call the sprites, um, the built-in sprites init function. Uh, without that, the sprite will not work. And then the two pieces that every sprite must have are an image, and this image, we're just going to make this be a rectangle for now. Uh, it's a lot easier to just work with rectangles while you're getting everything working and then come back and change those into graphics once you have it working the way you want to. So this is going to be our surface. I decided to make it 50 pixels wide and 40 pixels tall so it'll be a little rectangle and then I'm just going to fill that uh, with a color and I think I'll do green and then the second mandatory piece is you have to have a rectangle, a rect defined, and so we will do that by using self.image.getRect. And let's place that on the screen somewhere convenient. Uh, we're going to be having our ship down towards the bottom of the screen, so let's just put it, let's put the center x at width over 2, that will make it centered on the screen, and we'll put the rect bottom equal to height oops, height minus 10. That'll put it 10 pixels up from the bottom. So it'll be 
in a nice position to start out at. And then it's going to need to move side to side. So we're going to set an X speed um, that will control how fast in pixels that sprite should move. And our speed will start at zero. And for our update portion of our sprite, which is the things that will happen every time the animation loop happens, every time the, the update happens in the animation loop, we need to tell it to just move its rectangle at whatever the speed is. Okay, and right now that's zero, so it won't be moving. But once we start adding controls, we'll have the controls change what that speed is. But before we do that, let's make sure that our sprite works. So we'll create a new object. So I'll just use the variable name player, and that will be one of these player sprites. And we just need to make sure that we add any sprite that we create into the sprites all sprites group so that down here in our animation game loop it gets updated and it gets drawn. So let's see if we have any problems. Nope, there we go. There's our nice little green player sprite down towards the bottom of the screen ready to talk about how to control it. Now, how do we go about making it move? Uh, when we're talking about movement, uh, we're talking about uh, we want to use the arrow keys, or if you prefer A and D, you can use those as well. Uh, but we want to use the keys to control it. Now that means we want to talk about events. Remember we have this section of the game loop was dealing with events. Um, events again are any, any, anything that might happen outside of your game that you want the game to know about. Uh, like someone clicking the mouse button, someone pushing a key on the keyboard, um, and then you can write some code for what the program should do when that event happens. Now, we have a couple of options here when we talk about using the arrow keys to control the sprite. Now, one way is, right down in here in our event queue, we could say, um, if the left arrow key was pressed, so there'll be another event for that, so if the left arrow key was pressed, then we tell the player sprite to move to the left. And then we would up here in our player sprite define some command called move left, or, or maybe just move, um, that could be left or right, and that would set the speed to the appropriate speed. In the case of left, we wanted to go to a negative value, so it goes this way. And in the case of right, we want to go to a positive value, so it goes this way. But that means that when you press the left arrow key, the sprite will start moving to the left. And then when you let go of the left arrow key, it will keep moving to the left. And while that might be um, a way you want to control things in some games where your sprite can't actually stop moving, um, in our case, that's going to be kind of frustrating because then we would have to make two more, or two more events for the left key getting released and the right key getting released and make those set the speed back to zero. So it starts to get kind of cumbersome. So instead, what we're going to do is we're going to tell our sprite um, right here in our update section, we're going to tell our sprite that your speed should always be zero. Okay, so first thing, just you shouldn't be moving. And then we're going to check and see is the key down. If the key is down, then you can move. So you're always sitting still unless the key is pressed down. So the way that we do that is we have to find out what keys are down, OK? And the way you do that is there's a command in Pygame called um, pygame.key.getPressed. And get pressed will give us back a list. And that list will be every key on the keyboard that happens to be down right at this instant. So if three or four different keys are held down at the same time, you would know about all of them. Um, so once we have that list, we can say if the key state of pygame.k left, right, that's the left arrow key, is down, then we're going to set the speed x to uh, negative 
say five, and we'll see how we like that speed. And if the key state of the right key is down, then we're going to set the speed to five. Okay, and that makes things a little simpler so that it always moves as long as you hold it down and as soon as you let go it will stop. So if we try that out, you can see when I press left it goes left and when I let go it stops. So I can, you know, if I want to move quickly I can move back and forth between the keys and I can control how he moves. Now we still need to deal with the edges of the screen. And if you remember in the sprite example we made this we made the sprite wrap around so that if you went off this side you would come back in on this side. But I think for this game, I want the sides to be walls so that I can't go past the edge. So we just want to tell the sprite here that if the rect, if the right edge of the sprite ever tries to get bigger to go past the right side of the screen, ever tries to get greater than width, then we're just going to set the right equal to width. So that way the right coordinate can never get bigger than whatever our width is. And just the same on the uh, left side, we're going to say if it ever tries to get less than zero, then we're going to set the rect.left equal to zero. Okay. That way I will be nicely stuck on the screen or constrained as programmers like to say. So I'm constrained to say on the screen. So that's some pretty simple movement. If you'd prefer to use different keys, for example, if you want left to be the A key and you want right to be the D key, that's how you would do that. Um, if you'd like the sprite to move faster, as you can imagine, you could do something like that and make the speed a little bit faster. And now when we move, it's a lot quicker. Um, you can play around with that, get it the way you like it. Um, remember, if you make it too fast, you're basically going to just teleport from one side to the other, and you'll never be able to stop in the middle because you won't be fast enough. Your, your fingers won't be fast enough to let go. Um, so find a comfortable speed that you like, and in the next lesson, we will start talking about adding some enemies.